Hey, Pat, I see you had some good news this week. Why don't we start with that news release? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. <clears throat> we had a $4 million award from the Department of Defense, U.S. Department of Defense, and um, really a, a process that, uh, that took some time. We started a conversation with the Pentagon about a year ago. They were looking for innovative solutions to rare earth processing, that mid-market processing, and uh, the, um, the solutions that they were trying to bring forward, they wanted to have as, as real innovative commercial fortitude. And uh, the $4 million award was, was quite significant. It was a vote of credibility for everything we've been doing the last couple of years. And uh, the interesting thing about the contract or the award, which is a contract, of course, it's an LT agreement, which means other transaction agreement, <clears throat> is that it's open-ended. And that means that uh, when we get through the first $4 million of uh, showing all the capability of Rapid SX, our uh, processing tech, there's an add-on opportunity to then get to a commercial level, which takes you to further um, securing what the U.S. needs, which is rare separation in that mid-market. So that seems to be really good news. And it, how does that tie in with your the facility you're building down in Louisiana? It ties in perfectly because this particular award um, will be uh, carried out in Kingston, Ontario, where we have our commercial demonstration plant. We're processing heavy and light rare earth, which is um, nowhere in North America currently. Um, we've, we've built that plant over a number of years. We're going through the final commissioning right now. And uh, everything we're proving out in uh, Kingston will then get plugged into a much larger facility in Alexandria, Louisiana. And again, the nature of the add-on contract, if you will, is that we, we prove out, we show capability. We run multiple hours of product in the Kingston facility. We use all that engineering data and metric and whatnot, and we plug it into the full-size plant in, in Louisiana. And again, the US DOD is quite impressed by the fact that not only do we have tech that's evolved to this point, but that we actually have a building located in Alexandria that allows us to then move to a commercial path forward, which is really what they're looking for. And what's the update on that facility in Louisiana? Well, the facility, uh, <clears throat> we've negotiated all the final uh, lease terms. Uh, we're engineering with Metcam out of New England. And so we're, we're working with, of course, Kingston Process Metallurgy as well, but Metcam out of New England are doing all the engineering planning to look at a ramp up plan from 2000 ton to 5000 ton to 7500 ton and that's x theorem x um, uh, yttrium so uh, all that engineering is being done right now we've got a a very good space meaning 80,800 square feet and we're plugging the engineering plan into that facility now and um, moving forward we've got a very uh, precise timeline a good team of engineering people working to get us to the finish line so when this plant gets up and running, you're going to need uh, some feedstock from uh, different mines. So what are you doing to negotiate uh, that the feedstock to go into this new plant in Louisiana? Brett, uh, I can't share too much of the uh, the confidential discussions we're having, but uh, we've got currently uh, 14 discussions going on that are, uh, call them U.S. friendly feedstock sources. They're all at different levels of um, uh, production fortitude, and um, some are, are capable to get to the finish line by late 24 when we need feedstock and some are a little bit further on in their uh, their growth, but that, that works well with our ramp up plan. So um, I think, you know, uh, Jeff Atkins, uh, Jeff joined our team back in uh, in December of 22. And uh, he's actually working quite actively on the feedstock sourcing. Uh, we're looking in um, obviously Australia, South America, we've got a couple of opportunities in Africa, Canada as well. And again, all at different stages, but looking to feed into um, a couple of sources for, for stage one, which is the 2000 ton plant and uh, more news to come. And uh, how is the bank account these days to fund all this activity? Uh, the bank account uh, will be doing just fine. Not only do we have this government money with add on funding coming up, um, we were in negotiations with uh, several customers for what we call pre-purchase supply agreements. So they're looking to fund into the processing facility in order to uh, help us get to the finish line with our construction. And then uh, they have a discount on product once we start to supply it. Uh, we also have a couple of other uh, debt and equity instruments we're looking at uh, currently to move forward, but uh, we'll be well-funded on our path towards that first $45 million US. Again, we've got uh, government money, we've got some equity opportunities, we've got uh, offtake arrangements that are uh, in discussion. And again, more news to follow on that front as well. So we're feeling pretty, uh, pretty bullish about our plan forward here. That sounds exciting. Now, what sort of news can investors look forward to for the, the summer? Uh, through the summer, I think you'll you'll hear about some of these uh, feedstock arrangements coming to fruition. Um, we're anticipating that uh, one or two offtake arrangements uh, could possibly be uh, penned to paper and, and signed. And 
that will be great news because that's showing that uh, customers have now stepped up to our business plan. Uh, we've got ongoing government support. I mean, this, this support, um, when you think about it, Chris, it's a, you know, we're a Canadian company and the U.S. DOD just funded our, our project going forward. So you can imagine what the Canadian government's looking at uh, relative to an innovative Canadian company. So there are more government funding opportunities coming our way. And um, again, uh, everything else that sort of ties into our, our business plan, which is be a first mover, uh, delivering rare earth oxides to the North American market for all sorts of security and commercial reasons. Well, that seems like very exciting. Uh, thanks for your time today, Pat. Yeah, thank you, Chris.